Please welcome to the stage, Adam Lowen! How's everyone doing? This is cool, thanks. I, um, thanks for coming. Is it that he announced me as a Jew? Is that what's so funny? And they're like, next up, a fucking Jew is here. I, I just got here from work. I got here late. Has the show been solid? Uh, seems like everyone's having a good time. I'm, this is cool that everyone's willing to tell these stories, because when Kevin told me the theme, I was like, all right, that's fine. I guess I'll do mine, too. So um, I, too, have an incest story. Um, is that not tonight? Was that not? Uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk about love. Um, and I feel bad for the word love. I mean, I'm Jewish, so I feel guilty about everything, but <laughs> I do, I feel like the word love must be so fucking confused all the time, because it's like, okay, hold on a second. I am the signifier that two people have found their true life partner, and I'm also the way people articulate their feelings about truffled french fries. No fucking way. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I'm not trying to be all high and mighty like I do that all the time. I, I abuse that word too. I love a lot of shit. I love, uh, I love my wife. I love comedy. Um, I fucking love truffled french fries. <laughs> So, uh, but I was asked to choose a bunch of years ago, and uh, that's, that was, my girlfriend and I were living in the East Village together, and uh, we were having, let's just call it a discussion that evening. Uh, we just eaten dinner and washing dishes in the kitchen, and we're talking about our future together. And uh, she says, like, you know, what does our future look like? And everything was sort of going very typically how it always had. Uh, she was like, well, what are our, what's our future look like? And I was like, yeah, what are we going to do on Wednesday? And <laughs> I, I just did not want to have the conversation. It had nothing to do with her. Uh, she was awesome. And it really was just like my head was not in it. But I wasn't like afraid of commitment because I could commit to some things. Because 20 minutes before we were having the conversation about our future together, I was having a conversation about myself and about my career and comedy and everything I wanted to do. And I had no problem looking into that future and being like, yeah, in 20 years, I want to do X, Y, and Z. And she just said, I feel like you love comedy more than you love me. Yeah. And I paused for way too long. <laughs> like, you're not allowed to pause at all, but I paused for fucking way too long. And, uh, but it was also like a really, it was, there was part of me that was pausing because I was like, oh shit, but there was also part of me that was like, oh, that's a very astute observation. <laughs> That's like when someone came and told me, just like, oh, did you know that Bernie Sanders has an anagram for bare end rinses? I was like, oh, I didn't know that. That's really, I got to pause on that one for a while. And I realized this was not the first time that I had been torn between a girl and comedy. When I was in college, I uh, had a crush on this girl named Lucy. Lucy was this hot hipster girl who uh, had a short haircut and rode a bicycle, and that's all I needed. Uh, <laughs> short haircuts and bicycles, that's all I fucking get. Like, honestly, if that kid would have been into it, I probably would have fucked the kid Elliot from E.T. Uh, <laughs> that would have been fine. <laughs> so, Lucy, huge crush on this girl. It's, uh, I'm in college uh, at the University of Florida. It's the year 2000, I'm a junior. <laughs> And uh, I am, I see her around town all the time. We have some mutual friends, but there are two things getting in the way of me hooking up with Lucy. One, she's super hot. And two, I have no game. So <laughs> it's just not happening for a long time. The other thing that I'm passionate about besides Lucy is comedy. I'm really, I started really getting into comedy at this time, uh, writing, performing, and sketch, and improv, and all that sort of stuff. Um, 
but I have become obsessed with Steve Martin's stand-up records. And I got his 1977 Grammy Award winning Let's Get Small comedy album on vinyl. And I have it, and I listen to it all the fucking time. And I can't stop listening to it. And it's like annoying my friends. It's all I talk about. So one night we go out to the bar, and we're downtown. And Lucy's there. I'm there. All of our friends are there. And somehow Lucy and I get in this conversation, and I start talking about Steve Martin. And I start talking about his jokes and how groundbreaking it was and what was going on with comedy at the time. And it's like 1.45 in the morning. We're hammered. And she was like, we should go listen to your record at your house right now. And uh, I was like, yeah, let's do that. And so we get on our bikes and ride back to my house. Uh, it's just the two of us. And we walk to the conveniently located record player inside my bedroom. She is sitting on my bed. I put on the Steve Martin record, and fucking nothing happens. My record player is busted. And I check the needle. I check the outlet. I have no idea uh, what's going on. And, like, she's on my bed. We're both drunk. Like, we're here. Even my bed sheets are like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Uh, but she's there, and it was weird because I there was some part of me that was like, man, I'm... I want to hook up with this girl, but I also want to show her what I'm really passionate about. And, uh, and I asked her, I said, she lived like a 20 minute bike ride away from where I lived. And I was like, oh, does the record player work at your house? <laughs> and she said to me, I feel like you love comedy more than you, I'm just kidding, that'd be fucking weird. <laughs> Uh, very bizarre if she said that. So rather than just having the balls to hook up with this girl, I, we get on our bikes. I fucking, like, I'm there. I'm there. I'm, like, this far away from her, and I don't have the guts, and I'm like, let's go listen to this record elsewhere. So we take the party 20 minutes away. I don't know if you've ever tried to carry a record while drunk riding a bicycle. It's not, like, the easiest thing in the world. So we get to her house, and we put on the album. And if you don't know the album, it just starts with, you know, like, ladies and gentlemen, the boarding house is uh, proud, proud to present, you know, uh, Steve Martin. And everyone applauds, and that gets in. And there's, like, the first joke of the album. So he starts playing banjo. He doesn't even say anything. Uh, he starts playing banjo, and he's really good. And the first line, the, like, 15 seconds in, he goes, hey, this guy is good. And that's the first laugh. We both laugh. And then I just make a beeline for her mouth. I'm just, like, making out with her. I'm like, okay, that's all I wanted to do. We got one laugh in, and now we can make out. I feel like I honored my part of the agreement. <laughs> when we were at the bar, you said you wanted to listen to the record. Uh, there's a problem with hooking up to a comedy record in that, <laughs> like, it's not a turn on. Like, no one, it's entertaining, but no one, like, no one's like, hey, let's get it on. Why don't we put on uh, Gaffigan's Hot Pockets routine? That'll really <laughs> do it for me. So, but it's like, I'm walking a fucking tightrope here because I feel like we're making out on her bed and I feel like any move that I make, like I didn't expect this thing to happen ever and any move I make could just derail the whole evening. And, uh, but it's weird when you're trying to take a girl's bra off and in the background you hear Steve Martin going like, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, that was it, I hook up with this girl and it, it was great. And cut back to uh, my girlfriend, right? So we're in the East Village. And uh, um, I was thinking about that, like, do I love comedy more than my wife? Or more than my girlfriend? Um, and that's a tough question. That's a tough thing to uh, <laughs> answer at first. Uh, because in terms of just, like, amount of time spent with one or the other, like, I've been with comedy way longer than with my girlfriend. <laughs> I just know comedy so much more. And, uh, which is not the answer that she wanted to hear at all. <laughs> I feel like I have to love my girl, that my girlfriend more in that moment because she's the one willing to stick around while I explain to her the interesting facts about whether I love comedy more than her. 
Um, but she, so she hung around. That, that girlfriend is now my wife now. We have a baby. And uh, um, I feel like the tables have turned uh, because uh, we were arguing the other night. And I was like, wow, I feel like you love watching Bravo more than you love me. <laughs> And I know that she's the perfect match for me because she paused like way too long. <laughs> um, all right, thanks everybody. That's my time.